Did you know I started making rice paper? This is my fall collection. There are a number of different designs that you can pick up on my site at thepaintedphotographer.com. These are all the paintings that I turned into rice paper. To use this rice paper, I'm going to teach you how easy it is just to make a couple of old frames into pieces of art for your home. We took these old frames and cut out wood boards and it used the little DIY vintage linen and painted the top of them white. Whenever you do any type of decoupaging with rice paper, decoupage paper, tissue paper, even white paper, you want a coat of white paint underneath. So I'm using the DIY liquid patina and these are two different fall rice papers that I have available. They're very thin and they do have natural fibers in them. When I decoupage, I like to give the entire wood surface a coat of the DIY liquid patina. It absorbs all of that. Um, the paint is very porous, so it absorbs that very, very quickly, and you don't have as much open time. So it all dried. Now I'm going and making what's called an anchor. So you go ahead and put the paper down on that first side, making sure that it's all fitted down there really nice. Peel your paper back up on the other side and add that DIY liquid patina to the bottom side and making sure that you have a really good thin coat. Put that paper down and smooth it out. Now the key to rice paper is using the IOD brayer. You want to make sure that you have a really, really tight adhesion. And using this IOD brayer, I didn't think I needed to. I'm telling you, I didn't think I needed to, but now that I've started using it, I don't do any decoupaging without that brayer. So here's my other one, and I did a little test on this, and I got the rice paper a little bit on the wet side, on the printed side. Then I went ahead and made my anchor and pushed the rice paper down on it. What the water does is it makes it a little bit more pliable, and it also um, stretches that rice paper just a little bit more, because when you get your rice paper wet, it stretches just a teeny tiny bit and you can stretch it right into place. Then I went ahead and used my brayer again to make sure that this was all nice and adhered down. After my paper had thoroughly dried, you're gonna tell when it's thoroughly dry, it's no longer cold, you're going to take a piece of sandpaper and you're gonna sand that edge down. You're gonna go from the top down. Do not go side to side. Do not go from the top up. You wanna do exactly as I'm doing right here. It was a little hard to juggle this frame when it was hanging in the air like this so you'll see in a minute here that i changed it and i put it down on the on the wood frame so that i actually had something to place it on and still do that downward motion i peeled all of this paper away from the edges to have a nice clean edge the paper just breaks right away and that's why you've got to make sure that it's dry so that it does break right away Now I'm just going to test it in the frame, see what it looks like. Yep, it's going to be beautiful, especially with that rustic look to it. This was the other one. I took all those edges away. I did want kind of a aged look on it. I didn't like the white edges, so I took my IOD ink, and this is a brown color that I made up using the red and the green ink making a brown and it has a little bit of black in it and I really darkened up those edges giving it a nice age to it and I did this for both of them and after it was dried then I took a dry cloth and I wiped the excess ink off of the print so I'm just wiping off that excess ink and it gave it those nice dark edges now I took a liquid patina and I went right over the top and the ink is the IOD ink so it is not water soluble so it will not smear around if you use a different ink you might have trouble with it smearing around with this liquid patina so I put that on and I let it dry it does have a little bit of a color difference it kind of darkens up the print just a little bit when you put it on there and this is just a protect coat that I have on here. We're gonna let that dry. When that's dry, I like the look of Big Top. I put my Big Top in a separate container so it does not get stinky. 
You're also going to have to mix this up and make sure that it's very well mixed before you use it. I went over top of the liquid patina, giving this just a little bit shinier, um, not so tacky finish. I like the finish of Big Top, especially on a print. So I went ahead and just did a single coat of Big Top on top, on top of this liquid patina. After that, look, that big top had dried, I went in with a 220 grit sanding block and just ran over the whole thing. You have to make sure this is all dry. It's going to give you a nice, smooth finish. This is just a magic piece that you have in your hand. Now what we did is we took this frame and plopped the prints in there we couldn't nail it because we were afraid of splitting the wood so we went ahead and used some wood gorilla glue and glued all of the edges and put the frame back in there making sure that it, there wasn't too much so it didn't seep out onto the print so that that rustic frame looks really good i needed some weight why not use diy 32 ounce paints here is the prints all staged up in my outside garden decor. They are available on my website at thepaintedphotographer.com. You can look in the comments and I'll have a link below. Let me know which one of these is your favorite and if you'll be ordering rice paper to make your own art. One more super simple project. I had this frame that I picked up at a thrift store. I did like that image that was on there. I just went ahead and opened up the staples in the back and removed that print because I do like it. So I'm going to just paint up the frame. There was paper on the frame. So make sure you're checking your frames and making sure that there's no paper on them because you put paint on that, it'll come right off and it won't look good. So I took all that paper off. Now I just have the wood frame. I used Sandy Blonde. I thought that it went really well with the print that was in this frame. And you'll see that I didn't really care for it. It kind of blended in. You can see the print with both of the colors that I used. So I went back over the Sandy Blonde with Apothecary. The good thing about DIY paint is it needed a second coat, but it didn't matter that my second coat was Apothecary. I'm going to go in with some clear wax and wax up this frame, giving it a nice protect. There is no distressing on this frame. I did not distress back down to that sandy blonde. I kept it all as is. And then I went ahead and used dark wax to age up the frame a little bit to match the vintage print that's in it. When you put dark wax on, you have to wipe it back off again. So you're going to take a dry, lint-free towel and wipe off that dark wax. If you have a little bit too much, you can use the clear wax as an eraser. Just put it on a clean, dry cloth and wipe again, and it will take some of that dark wax off and give you a nice look for your finished project. Here is that print with a different color frame. It looks so good. I am so glad I went with Apothecary versus the Sandy Blonde. Now I have a quick thrift haul for you. I hope you enjoy it. Hey everyone, I'm back. I've been thrifting for a while, but haven't been listing anything. Life has gotten really busy. We are remodeling our bathroom and it's been a lot of work. It's almost done, like this close. It really needed to be done. Anyway, I have a little bit of a thrift haul for you. You can see this stuff right here. I got a few more things on the other side, but I'll kind of quickly show you what I got going on here. I have a rolling pin, this moose wood box. It's gonna be perfect. I have, this is a Royal Ironstone China serving dish. I love these white ones. 57 cents, perfect price. Just a wood basket. This was $1.97. I do like these, especially for fall. A tote. It's got a cow on it that says stuff, which is kind of cute, but I think I'm gonna upcycle it. This is really funny. 
It is a frame with a wood board and then it had a medallion on it and it's painted up. I taught this class. Somebody took this class and obviously was done with it. It was a long time ago. So it's okay that they got rid of it to the thrift store. Now it's 97 cents and I bought it back. Another wood tote. It has hearts here. I'm going to use some IOD clay and molds and go right over top of that heart inside and outside and you'll never even know it. Two teapots. They were pretty pricey. They were $4, but they're not gonna look like this. Of course, I didn't look them up yet. Tell me in the comments if they're worth anything because I have not looked them up yet. But I plan to paint them and put a snowman scene or something on here. What do you think? Here's a sign. It has a little easel on it. It's perfect for decoupage and over the top of this. It was 37 cents. A Christmas tin. This has got three of them inside. They all look the same. It says made in Hong Kong, which I thought was kind of cool. I guess they don't all look the same. I think the one on the inside looks like this. A wood candlestick. I always pick these up. Anything looks good sitting on top of them. So you can find a wood blank or a candle or something or just a figurine sitting on the top of there. This bird would be awfully cute as a riser up there. I have a white tin. It's embossed with a little flower design. It was 47 cents. They're perfect. This little basket is wood. It was 97 cents. It's going to look really cool with um, some fall colors on it. I don't know why, but I like this. It says May, it says stainless steel Japan. So I don't know. I just really, really liked it. And I thought it'd be a good display piece in a kitchen um, along with your wooden spoons or something like that. Also, I think it's functional. Here's this little, he's a birdie. He is a salt or pepper shaker. I'm not sure which one, but he looks like wood, but I think he's made out of resin. And he was 27 cents. He's really tiny, but I think he's cute. This cardinal, I'm sure was supposed to be red and it faded over time. I don't mind that pink. Don't mind that pink at all. It's from Japan. It was $1.57. Pink is in. Pink is, because of Barbie, pink is coming back. All right, here's two little birdhouses. They would look cute sitting in some decor or on top of something, especially for the fall or Christmas holiday. They were 37 cents a piece for these little things. This home coal baby deer set, they're pretty sweet. A white chicken with a red head. I really like these chickens. This is a salt or pepper shaker. I'm not sure which one comes out his tail. This little bunny, he, she is really cute also. She's also a salt and pepper shaker and she is all by herself. She's a little lonesome. So you got a pair right there. Little chickies, these are salt and pepper shakers. They're very vintage looking. I have not looked any of this stuff up, so I'm not sure if it's worth anything. I just liked it. That's how I do my thrift shopping, is if I like it, I buy it. If I think you're going to like it, I buy it. Here is a little squirrel. Squirrels are really hot for fall. It is also a salt or pepper shaker, and he's got some scary eyes on him, but I think I can fix them up to make them look a little bit better, or I'll leave him as is. So he's really cute. He'll look good in some fall decor. Here's a little ornament. This is a little um, bird feeder with a couple of birds on it. I thought it was really super sweet. This bowl, I have not looked this up, but it's Hager 514PM. And it's a beautiful corally light pink. It was $4. I think they knew they had something there. It's got that embossed on the bottom. Again, I'll look it up. You let me know in the comments if you know about that. 
This is a Howard Laughlin is what it is. Again, I bought it because I like the design. Gingerbread man. I thought he was cute. I don't know if I like this in front, but he can come right off. I, I can just take him right off and just use the wood cutout and then use this for something else. And it was 67 cents, but he's kind of cute. All right, this, I have no idea what it is. It's a Heartstone USA. It's embossed in the back. This was 97 cents and it's a little sheep. I thought he was really cute. This tin, I liked it. I don't know anything about it. It has container made in England on the bottom. And it's just got some really pretty designs. It's very vintage. It's got a little teal knob on the top. Thought it was cute. Frames. This one, I like the shape of it. I like the detail in it. And I also like the picture. I think I might paint up this frame and just use the image that's in there. All of these frames that I have, this one I might use what's in there. I'm not sure. I'll paint the frame. And this one, I will use rice paper and paint the frame, put the rice paper on there. New art, perfect. So if you're at your thrift store, find your frames and use the rice paper, either the JRV rice paper or my rice paper that I'm creating. And you can find them at thepaintedphotographer.com. It's a very inexpensive way to create art. This is a little Fiesta bowl. It looks pretty darn old, I'm not sure. It was 98 cents. I thought it was cute. I do like the color too. A couple of, these are very, very old um, looking geese. They were made in Japan and they were 67 cents. These are also salt and pepper shakers. And I just thought they were cute. They're very primitive. Chickens. I have two miscellaneous chickens that do not match. Both of them are salt or pepper shakers, and they're very vintage-y looking, very, very good looking chickens. And then I have a pair of chicken salt and pepper shakers with some sunflowers on them. These um, are a salt and pepper shaker, and they also look really, really good. They're a very nice looking chicken. This is a Home Co. 1979 Rabbit. And I have not looked this one up yet, but it's very large. No chips or um, dings on that at all. I have a bunch of metal buckets. These were thrifted at different times, but someone was obviously planting in them because there's holes on the bottom. It's perfect for me because that's what I would do. This one's also got some dirt in it. I would plant in them also. I'm going to clean these up. That's the thrill of going to a thrift store is you get all the dirt along with it. it. Takes a lot of cleaning. Then I also have this tin bucket. I do like the color of it. It's very fall. I think I'm going to put some fall floral in here and sell that in this in the store. This brass and copper container is going to be sold as is. I will put this online at thepaintedphotographer.com. One more tin bucket. This one has the flag on it. it. The flag is embossed in there, which is really kind of cool. And it has a little handle. It would look really sweet if it is not the 4th of July time or Memorial or Labor Day, or you want a different look. Just turn it around. There's also a flag embossed on this side, but it's muted. It does not have any color. The side has the color. They were going to throw this in the garbage at the thrift store. And one of the guys that works there took it out of the garbage and said, someone's going to buy that. And I was there like half an hour later and bought it. So he was going to tell those people in the back, see, somebody bought it. Here's another bird. This one um, was made in England. Nope, made in Japan. Can't tell. 
Anyway, it's a pretty nice looking bird. This, there's a set of little white birdies. They're really cute. I do like bird figurines in case you haven't noticed. A pink flamingo. I'm not too much of a pink flamingo fan, but I know when people like pink flamingos, they like pink flamingos. This one was cute. It used to be, oh, it still is. It has a light in there. So it has a LED light and it lights up. So it's kind of fun. She's cute. Someone will like her. This home coal bunny, um, this I believe is Woodland Rabbit. I did get a chance to look this one up when I was in the thrift store. And it's also, it's just a really, really cute bunny for any time. Here's a couple more um, ducks. These are a little bit more realistic and these are also, um, I don't know what they, I don't know where they're from. Can't read that. So they have a little bow on them. You can turn them both one way like this, or you can turn one around like that. They're cute. This plate, I just liked it. It's called the Ronald. It was made in Japan and it's just got a very, very pretty floral design to it. I like how it's falling from the top. A couple of lanterns. These lanterns are really heavy, very heavy. This is some thick glass. They are meant to hang because this handle will sink in. You can't stop it from sinking in. It'll sink in if it's not hanging. So there is a pair of lanterns that I will probably sell in the store and not online because they are very heavy. But they need some cleaning up. There's yuck in there. All right, we have a few more items. A couple of wood, there's a wooden mallet here, a tenderizer, and then also this metal tenderizer. This is really old, it's got a hook on the bottom. This one has no hook, but it's really cute. These are a good seller. Staying with the tools, there's a couple more. This is a potato smasher. I think my mother used to use that. And then I'm not sure what this is. It might be a tomato smasher too. But look at that. Look at how sweet it is. You could put a picture in there or a recipe, or you could set it up like this on your cupboard. It's They're really kind of fun and they're old and crusty. I like that old and crusty kitchen stuff. Here is a wood bird. She will look really cute painted up. A couple of spools, I believe that's what these are. This is a tiny little one. It's got the metal on the end. And then this one is, must be like a sizer or something. They're really fun. An amber bottle. I think I have enough amber bottles in my own collection. So I decided to put this one on the website. So look for this if you like the amber, dark amber bottles. This one's really dark. And it does have some embossed writing on the top here. I'm not sure what it says. A wood candlestick. This wood candlestick is really light and it's the wood is extremely pretty. It does have a base on the bottom. It was someone sold it for 50 cents at a garage sale. And uh, um, I think I'm just gonna use the DIY Dark and Decrepit and make this um, stand out a little bit more. Here's a, a glass. It's just got really pretty um, picture on there. A creamer. This is 1989 and it has a really pretty design on there as well. I do like creamers. This one has no chips or cracks and it does have a crackle finish to it. I do like it when those um, older, when those older pieces have the crackle, the crazing, I think is what they call it. Here's a mirror with a cherub on the top. This will be really pretty painted in a different color and then probably white waxed to bring out some of those details. I can't wait to try this one. This is just a light fixture. It probably went like that, I'm not sure. 
but wouldn't that make a great display piece? You can put something on the top of there. You can put a candle on the top of there, just like a little riser. I like it. A set of bookends, corbels. They don't have any holes in them, so I don't think we can call them corbels, but you could use them as a pair of bookends. And uh, these are very, very heavy. I think these will go to the Gilman store because of their weight. But if you're interested, let me know in the comments and I might put them on the website for you. Depends on if they're in the store or not. These little wood candle sconces here, my granddaughter had them in her house and she didn't want them so she brought them over to me. I'm not sure I like them. I don't know if I'll do anything with them or not, but she did not want them and she thought maybe grandma can do something with them. I'm not sure that I can. Here is a wood box. It does have a lid. Somehow. I thought. Oh, there we go. It does have a lid. So what I think you could use this as is if you just painted it up as a wood box taken off the image on the top, you can use it as a riser. So it'll be a nice riser. If you ever put your um, decor stuff in in your house, you always want like something raised to the next level or put it on something. So that would make a good riser for that. Maybe I'll put some feet on it. Here's a bread box. This bread box, not normally a bread box fan, but this one is very, it's very well built. It's got a good magnet to it. Um, some people still use that type of a bread box on their cupboard if they have a lot of room. I don't have a lot of room in my kitchen, so I don't have a bread box, but I'm gonna paint that up. It's gonna be sweet. Here is a candle holder. This is just a plain old candle holder. It does have a little bit of age to it. I think I like it, but it does have a chip right there, so I'll have to figure out if I'm going to paint it and put some IOD clay on that chip and or if I'm just going to try and figure out how to patch it and then patch in the paint to make it not look like it was patched. This candle holder screamed fall to me. I, it, this does not come out, but it just screamed fall to me. And then I found this candle stick and I put it on top. Whoop. I put it on top and I just thought it made a really good pairing, just like it is. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. I got two wood bases. Again, you can use them for whatever. I will probably put use some decoupage paper or um, some rice paper, maybe a Christmas transfer that's coming soon. Um, they'll be good for something. This candle it's not a candlestick it's just a it's just a this and I like the finish already I will probably put this I think it's gonna match my new bathroom so I think I'm gonna try and find a place for this in my new bathroom because I do like it one last item a flower canister this is a very very old flower canister it's got that nice copper lid on it with that graphic on the side of it it does it has a little bit of age but not very much age at all that's it for my thrift haul i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope you enjoyed the projects that i did for you today and i hope to be on here soon again it just working full time and trying to do this business it just and that life, summer is just busy for us. Um, so hopefully in the winter time, I can get more YouTube videos done for you, some more how to's. But please let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a like, a subscribe, a share, all of those things help my channel so much and I appreciate all of you for everything that you do for me. If you would like to purchase any of these thrifted products, please head on over to thepaintedphotographer.com and I also sell my DIY paint. IOD products, JRV products, and soon to be recycled decoupage papers. Go and check it out at thepaintedphotographer.com. Until next time, happy painting.